Hey everybody, today we have an unboxing and review video. Uh, this is an Andon Star 8409 digital microscope. I've been looking at digital microscopes for a while. Um, I would have loved to have bought a, you know, nice $1,500, $2,000 one with the whole rig that has the uh, arms and the camera and the lenses and all that, but I, I just don't have that money right now. Um, but this company actually contacted me, and in Star, and offered me one of these uh, if I did a review and, um, you know, talked about it a bit. And believe it or not, this actual model, the AD409, was one of the ones I was looking at on Amazon. Um, I'm going to put a link down in the description there so you can see their whole product line. Uh, so when they offered it to me, I jumped on it. I, my eyes aren't bad, but, you know, I'm 40 plus, so they're not as great as they used to be. And with electronics getting smaller and smaller, you know, microscope's kind of a necessity anymore, even if your eyes are still pretty good. So this mainboard here is out of an Optima uh, 142. I'm having a problem with the power. Uh, it turns on, the fan comes on, but it doesn't start the color wheel of the light. I've replaced the PMD-1000 chip, but it still hasn't caused any changes in the situation, so I'm going to get in here and look a little more, but I just can't do it without a microscope. So, some of the upcoming videos that will be happening soon are going to be things like troubleshooting mainboards and projectors and that sort of thing because I'll be able to see it and I'll also be able to capture it and show it to you all. So uh, let's get right into it. Let's uh, open this thing up. Alright, so nice packaging. It was actually double boxed. I took it out of the shipping box. Let's open it up. Here's our manual. Introductions of Digital Microscope AD409. Gives you an idea of what it looks like here. Uh, you probably saw that in the uh, thumbnail. Let's see, the video sensor, wow, 4 megapixel sensor, that's pretty good. Up to 300 times magnification. It'll do JPEG, 120 frames per second, HDMI output, micro SD card, up to 32 gig, that's good to know. It also has Wi-Fi, if I remember correctly, but the Wi-Fi is in beta, so you can't can't rely on it according to them, and that's fine. I'm sure as things progress, uh, it'll be more supported. And here's a list of the items. So we have the metal base, the bracket, the remote, power adapter, USB cable, UV filter, maybe that's for glare, uh, the control cable, an HDMI cable, and some tools for putting it all together. So let's see, the uh, two clips are listed here, so that's how it's supposed to be with the clip going down. I probably would have installed it that way. So let's get it out, let's put it together, and then we'll kind of compare the instructions to what's in here. Let's see what's under here. Ooh, nice foam. Packaging's really nice. Here is the main portion of the scope. Big screen. Look, that's my hand. It's a big screen, about 10 inches, I think. And then there's the actual microscope itself in there. So we're going to leave that in the bag for a moment. I'm just going to set it over there. Let's see what else we got. In that front pouch, we have the hardware with the clips. Remember, those clips are going to be installed that way. And there's the mount. Well, that's cool. So you can use that for adjusting the height and raw focus, and then that thumb screw on the back will lock it so that it doesn't. Okay, so if you're really loosening it up, oh, uh, they have a little, little plastic, I'm guessing Teflon, kind of 
thing to act as a brake. Yeah, so that lets you kind of tighten it down. That's pretty cool. I'm really impressed with the build quality so far. At home, I have a real cheapy little tiny microscope thing. I think it's terrible. But it did the job for when I needed it. Remote. Very cool. I don't know if they sent batteries, but I have some if not. Then we have a power adapter. 5 volt, 2 amp. So we have a 10 watt USB adapter. Then here is the switch cable. So it's micro USB into the scope and that probably goes to the power adapter and that probably also goes to the scope unless that's for the lights we'll see in a moment and here's just a micro USB the right angle a mini HDMI to standard HDMI and then Ah, that's under this, so we'll take that foam block out, and then here is the base. The base has the lights pre-installed, which is very convenient. You can see they're in here. Uh, okay, we were going to check the instructions, but that makes sense. So that little barrel plug is for feeding the lights. So let's, let's get this out of the way. Set that back there, so we have a nice backdrop. Let's set the base here. And let's look at that power cord. That power cord has a few buttons on it. We have power and then plus and minus and I assume these are brightness, brightness up, brightness down because they have that little kind of sun emblem. So let's uh, see here. Okay. And looks like these are, you know, three to five watt LEDs I'm guessing. We'll check the specs and see if it mentions, but you know, these are going to go something like that to light up the uh, main boards that will be down here. So let's get back into the instructions. Here we are. So we're going to do that. We're going to put the two shorties in here and bolt that base to it. There's a 3mm nut driver. That'll make this a lot easier. There's the one. Let me get that straight. Looks good. So, all right, now we'll put the clips on. So I got this one lined up over the hole. So let's see. Hopefully that about there. That'll be good. And this one. And these are adjustable. I don't know how much I'm going to use those. I may even end up removing them. But for now, I'm good. We'll keep it. Put that out of the bag. Nice big screen. I like that. The uh, camera head folds down like that. And you can see we have a focus. Then what we'll do is we'll set it in and we're going to lock it in around that ring. There's these uh, those little blue things. In fact, 
we'll do it that way so you guys can see it. There we go. That's locked in. Let's make sure I'm right on that. Actually looks like it goes down a little further if I go by that picture right there. So let's let's do it that way. Yeah, I like that better. See, I was trying to grab in that little thingy there, but this actually seems better. There we go. And there we go. That's all the way up. Let's get some wires connected now. Alright, so these are to that control. So one goes here, like that, and then this one, and that goes to here, and then we have a long USB which will plug into here. Now I'm going to go plug that into an extension cord. Alright, let's plug it in. Hey, alright, the lights came on. So we have power. Welcome. Oh, I see the little Wi-Fi thing in the corner. That is cool. So let's get the lights on the area I want to look at. And let's focus it. Wow. That's great. I believe this has a UV filter on it already. Check that out. So this is the uh, PMD 1000 chip I'm having trouble with. Man, that looks good. Let's get some more light on it. Those solder joints look okay. A little dirty over here. But I don't see any bridges. And I don't see any bridges here. And the quality of this thing is just phenomenal just on this little screen. Absolutely love it. Oh, I need to put an SD card in, but that's pretty good. Let's see, menu? Anything? Okay, so that's not that. Mode is maybe what that means. Let's see, let's go through the buttons. Okay, so that's camera, SD card, and video. Oh wow, it's got digital zoom. See that? Two, three, see what it goes down to. 
3x digital zoom. That's amazing. Here's a, uh, let's see what a, a needle probe looks like. Wow. That really makes, it's really going to make testing a lot easier because one of the things I have to check is what voltages are coming out of these pins and even with my good glasses on it makes it really hard but this just made my life so much easier this thing's amazing let's zoom it back out right this way yeah there we go let's bring it back to zero and let me go see if I have any batteries for this remote all right, so I have some uh, batteries in here. Yeah, they're going dead though. All right, anyway, let's see. So bottom button, looks like it reverses it. Oh. Here we are. So menu. So menu has resolution, exposure, record audio, date stamp, time lapse, sharpness, freeze. Oh, freeze like hold the image. Got it. So let's check the date stamp. Date stamp on. Oh, and I've I have a setting, so that's the video menu. Oh, I hit menu again and it switches to the other one. Okay. Wi-Fi, grid lines, date and time. That's what I was looking for. So let's see. What is today's date? December something. 12, uh, let's see. The 12th. 12, 12. And it is what fifteen twenty seven. All right, so let's see. Back is menu we can go to default version oh, let's Wi-Fi let's turn the Wi-Fi on and there's the SSID so I can connect to that with my phone and look at it that way too those things just so cool Here's another part I need to look at. This is, I think, this MOSFET that I took off is the problem on this board. I think that may have damaged that PMD-1000 as I point at it with that huge screwdriver. So this thing is just cool. Okay, so I wanted to set up a, well, actually something that I want to work on. Um, as I showed you before, this main board is out of the 146, and I removed a MOSFET which there we go has a uh, little bit of let's focus on top of that 
and get a little more light on it. There's the MOSFET, the back side of it. Things like four millimeters by four millimeters roughly. A little piece of lint. Alright, well whatever. Anyway, we're gonna check with the meter here. Get this right where you guys can see it. Of course, I'm still getting used to how all this stuff works. I did set up the remote. And to start recording, let's see, I think if I hit that button on top, capture, that should do it. Let's see if that starts moving. did insert an SD card, did I not uh, format it? No card. Mm -hmm. Oh, doesn't feel like it's in. Hang on. Okay, so I have the uh, scope set up so that we can check this MOSFET here. And one of the features I like about this thing is I can invert the background so that, let's see, I'm going to put a piece of paper, let's put a piece of paper under this so that we can get some uh, real contrast. And I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to use those clips. Hold that paper down. And then, let's get that chip. There it is. So you can see how easy that is to view. Move that light a little bit. There we are. So to make it even more obvious, I can invert it. Makes the chip white and the background darker. That'll make it easier to see with the probe sometimes. Now we're going to do it like that, because that's okay. Although I think we'll zoom in a little bit. Let's go to... Uh, yeah, 2x is good. Go to 2x. And let's check this. Now I am on diode test, so we should get, if this is good, from source to drain, we should read the blocking diode. Oh, wait. This is an end channel, I think. There's the blocking diode. Good. Here's the gate. Oh. Pushing too hard. Now let's check from gate to source. to uh, come up with a little way of holding those chips when I have to touch on the sides like that because I'm going to be checking a lot more of these kind of MOSFETs so I'm just going to, let's see, can I get on the edge? Let's not push down too hard. Yeah, so that's good. So I'll bet you I turned that MOSFET on. So now, come on, get back into the picture. This MOSFET is good. Looks that way. Let's see, will that turn it on? Must be the other way. Anyway, this MOSFET is checking out. 
So we are going to have to reinstall that. But I also want to check more of that main board. So I'm going to put that over on the little tray, get that paper out. And let's get the board ready so we can see more of what's going on here. And let's focus that. There we are. So there's the PMD 1000. Yep. And this is the area I want to check. Let's go back to default. So go back to default, I hit the default set button. Default set now. Now I thought the default would just pop me right back out, but I guess not. That's okay though. Let's get that nice and focused. These pins are what I wanted to check next. Okay, one little critique I have. It's it's small. It's not a big deal. These uh, lights are kind of a pain to position. They want to spring back on themselves. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is check those pins. So to start video, press OK. Hmm. Custer size warning. Custer size wrong. Custer or cluster? Custer. I think that's supposed to be cluster, but it's probably because of the um, camera or the SD card that I'm using. I'm using a 4 gig. I need to get a newer, better one to put in here. But let's check these pins. Alright, so to check these pins, I'm going to use the negative probe. Make sure none of these are loose. And then I'm going to get my toothbrush and some alcohol on. We'll make sure get all that flux out. Pins all seem good, even though the flux is all crusty. Let's check the side. are maybe connected as well as they should be. I don't want to bend them. But that's loose. Wow. Okay. So some of those are loose. Um, let me clean that off with some alcohol and then I'm going to get my NF Mini soldering pen and we'll do some soldering. Okay. So we are going to start Resoldering these pins. 
I, I think they're okay, but I'm not 100% sure. So rather than take a chance and run in circles some more, let's go ahead and let's take care of this. Get this. Let's start on this one. If I should use my pointy tip instead of the, uh, the side tip. Okay, the uh, wedge tip is way better. Watch. That's good. <clears throat> I do have to put that MOSFET back on, which goes there. So let's clean that pad up. So before I wrap this review up, and uh, this review, unboxing, whatever you want to call it, um, I figured let's look at something kind of neat. So I have uh, a DMD out of a Christie laser projector that has burn-in, and I figured it might be kind of cool to see what burn-in looks like up close. So let's get that under there. Let's rotate the focus ring. See, that's dust on top. I'm not worried about that. I want to see underneath. There's the burn-in right there. We can see we have some text across the top. Looks like uh, Cairo, Egypt, Naples, Italy. We got over here Brasilia, Brazil, Washington, D.C. Maybe it had a clock up there. I don't know kind of looks like book pages to me with that split in the middle right there so I don't know but there's the uh, the DMD and you can even see the icons from the computer it was connected to here's the back and the pins that it's going to connect to There's the part number for the one that I switched out. So, that's pretty cool. But, anyway. This is the uh, Andon Star Digital Microscope AD409. I'm going to put a link down in the description to buy one. And in fact, you're going to be seeing this thing a lot more often. Um, I am now able to do a lot of things that I just didn't have the uh, capability to do before. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't see. So I, if I can't see, I can't work on things. Now I can 
do a lot more mainboard repair, a lot of small, intricate stuff that I wasn't able to do before as easily. Um, so I really want to thank Andon Star for this. Again, I'm going to mention these guys anytime I use this scope because it's a real lifesaver and I really appreciate them working with me on it. Um, there's obviously no ads on this video. I made sure it's not monetized. So if, uh, if you're looking for a uh, good starter microscope, check out these. They have a few models under $200. Um, video is going to be just as good. They just don't quite have as many features like the HDMI out and stuff. So I'll be utilizing that in the future. I'm going to do some capturing and some video and hopefully get a big TV set up so that we can really see what's going on. So if you have any questions, comments, um, suggestions for this thing, stuff I can do with it, go ahead and stick it down in the comments. Again, check the description for a link to the Andon Star store on Amazon. Um, and yeah, most importantly, as always, thank you for watching.